Well, good evening, everyone. I wanted to make a quick little video about my electric fence situation and how I run it and all the components. And just to start off with, this is a Gallagher reel. Um, very good reel. And I've got a mixed metal poly braid on there made by Polyflex. It's got nine different metal nine different um, strands of metal in it and three of those are copper and it's a very very tough and resilient um, and great conducting electric fence product again made by powerflex and i started this line on a terra post you can get these at American grazing lands. A very good post. I've run almost a quarter mile of electric fence off of this terra post. And look, I got a lot of I got a lot of tension on there when I um if as you can see when I I mean I've got this rolled up very snug and that thing just takes it plenty stout. And again, it's running about a quarter of a mile. There's not much left on that spool. And then I'm running O'Brien um, step-in post. And I'm telling you, these are the best step-in post made. You just, and this fence is hot right now, so I'm not going to touch it. But you just run that through these little, you just throw the wire in there and, and, and it sits in there really nice. And very easy to get in the ground again this sandy loam soil so i'm a lot i've got a substantial advantage over different types of soils clay soils etc but i'm running these o'brien posts at about 20 steps apart so it's about 40 feet plus or minus um, these right here are a little bit closer than that um, and i put this post where it can push away from the wire to get around that tree or it can push the wire around that tree and the way I've got this set up my electric fence my electric fencer is inside this little barn and so I got this set up where the hot wire comes out um, through a hole in the right above the door there and then it I just hooked it up to this, uh, this is a thing to cut your fence off when you're going through a fence, but I just hooked it up right here, and then my jump wire goes from that to the electric fence, so I'm going to disconnect that so I don't get shocked, and again, I'm Put another terra post right there because that's a corner that I need. I could have used step in post or um, um, the post with the ring on top. I can't remember what those are called, but I just put a um, plastic candle here that's in there in the terra post. It's just hooked into this ring, and then I ran the wire through the other end here. And um, that works well. And there's a lot of tension on this corner. A lot of tension on this corner. And then I ran it out, ran it out there to another terra post. And I went the other direction. And then that run is the long run. And I'll show you that here in just a second. So I really, really like these components. I can step these terra post in anywhere and they, they make a, just a super stout corner. Those cattle can't do anything with them. So if I go inside the barn here and I'm going to come in here and cut off the fence charger. If I go inside the barn I've got a Zariba I guess is how you pronounce it um, fence charger. It's a 100-mile variety, and I've, I've got a Gallagher charger down in my other barn for the other side of the road, and I don't know which one of them is best. I know they both are 
putting out around 8,000 volts. And the sucker stout, if it hits you, you know it. I got it plugged into a lightning arrestor here, or a surge protector, if you would, if you will. And so I'm going to unplug that. I don't need it because I'm going to take up that fence. But I want to show you the rest of this fence, so stay tuned. I neglected to tell you kind of how I start these fences. So I put up that terra post. I, I hang that reel on it. I unlock the reel so it spins freely. And then I put a, a dead, one of the plastic handles, um, on the end of the um, poly braid. And then I pull it all the way to this terra post and go through that little eye on that dead. I take it to that terra post and then once I'm out here then I made a long run to my back fence on this piece of property and so I put this terra post in at a little bit of an angle so it's not straight up and down but I'm telling you this sucker's stout you see the three feet on that that hold it in place and and this rod's plenty stout. I mean, I got as much tension on there as I I could get and very strong corner. I really like that corner. And then I went out there over the top of the hill to the backside. And so I'm pulling that wire, no fence poster in place yet, pulling that wire clear to the backside. I hook it to a terra post back there. I could have hooked it to the barbed wire fence, but um, just hooked it to the terra post and hooked the handle into that terra post again so it's insulated. And then I come back to where the Gallagher reel is back there and I tighten that up and then I come in and follow it with the O'Brien post. So I'm putting in the O'Brien post after the wire is tight and that wire, those, the wire is put down on the third notch from the top, and that's, that's just the right height. Cattle aren't going to test it. Calves, the little baby calves can go under it and come back and forth, and then they will figure out as they go, as they get a little bit older, that that's hot, and we'll be able to keep them in. So, that's the deal. I'm going to show you that other end, but that's how I put this electric fence up. I put it up the other night. It probably took me about, probably about 45 minutes. And probably didn't need to take me that long, but I was piddling away at it. So here's the cattle. Here's where they are in this paddock. And they'll be here a couple of days, and then we'll go on to the next rotation. Here's the fence um, coming from the barn where we just were. You can see the tin on the barn right there on the right, just, just beside that tree. And that's not the straightest line in the world, but it's adequate and adequate for what we're doing with electric fencing. And look at the difference in the sides of the fence. The left side is where I just turned the cattle into. The right side's been grazed. And I'm going to be brutally honest about it. This is grazed more than I like. But again, we're fighting a little bit of no rain situation. And so doing the best I can, it, it doesn't look as bad in person as it is, as it does on camera. But I still don't like it. You can see a lot of dead grass in here that was not utilized last year. But that's what we have so we're going down here to the corner and i'll show you how we hook that up to a terra post so here's the terra post down at the end and again i put the crank on it up on the other side i mean it's got a lot of tension on that wire and then that's the way to the top of the hill where the barn is so 
there's almost a quarter mile of power braid stretched out here. Um, I just put a half hitch around here, a clove hitch to tie that off and then hook that into that bracket on the tear post. And like I said, that'll take a tremendous amount of pressure and be sturdy. So when I am ready to roll this wire back up, all I'm going to do is come down here, untie this, and then this this poly braid is free, and I stay up at, at the reel where the reel is, take it off the tear post, and go to reeling. It's a three to one geared reel, so it really rolls up quickly, and um, it probably wouldn't take two, maybe three minutes to roll this up. So I like the Gallagher reel. Um, there's multiple different types of reels that are geared reels, but you want a geared reel for sure. Otherwise you'll work yourself to death. So I've got to use the same water point in between the paddock I just moved the cattle into and this watering trough. And so I'm just going to swap the reel. I'm going to come down the side of that barn. And I've got a post back in the brush there that I'll uh, hook this fence up to. Actually, I'll move the terra post that the reel's hanging on now back there adjacent to a post that I got that you can't see in there. And they'll have access to this area that's already been grazed but just a small strip it's probably less than an eighth of an acre here so there'll be a little bit higher traffic here but that's what i've got to do to make this work so i'll show you that here in just a second so i got the fence moved and so it's coming right down alongside that barn my hookup with my jump wire is right beside that little door and so I strung it out here to the other side of the watering trough. Watering trough is there. Um, the Purina fly control, the mineral with fly control, some Altacid in it is right there. And then I've got it tacked into a terra post back in the back where there's an H brace. You can probably see it right there in the very back. So I really like the Terra Post. Boy, they just make it handy, 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 sturdy, very sturdy. And that's where we are. So one last thing to do once you get your fence set up is to check to see that you have good electricity to deter the cattle from getting out. Gallagher makes a real nice little voltmeter and you put batteries in it there's nothing on the display and um, just know that that's normal and it comes with a ground rod that fits in this little slot here when you're all done but when I'm one hand in it I gotta have everything ready to go so you put the ground rod down in the ground and then you put your voltmeter up underneath the wire and this is throwing out 6,700 volts, 63, 66, um, so 6.7 kilovolts, which is 6,700 volts. So a cow needs generally around 3,000 volts to stay within an enclosure. So we got plenty of juice here. Um, the longer you run out this fence, the less the voltage so because we're about a quarter mile out is why we're only hitting around 6.6 .6 kilovolts shorter runs it'll be in the 8,000 9,000 range so test your fence make sure it's really hot and you should be able to sleep at night and the cattle will stay in I appreciate you watching and hope that that will help you as you start designing your electric fence system and getting it working for your operation.
Have a great day. Thank you.